Mendelspot.com Advancing life science research, connecting people and ideas. We're here at the Gladstone Institute with Natalie Ng. She's this year's winner of the 2012 BioGenius Challenge that's hosted by Bay Bio, and she'll now go on to the national uh, competition. Congratulations, Natalie. Thank you. So tell us, what was your project about? Well, my project was about overcoming one of the major problems with migrate technology. So migrate technology has become an indispensable tool for the interrogation of cancer. However, one of the main problems is that tumor samples are often heterogeneous, meaning they're comprised of multiple cell types. So in my project, I devised a novel technology to overcome this problem through utilizing statistical gene expression deconvolution. How did you come up with this project? Well, I, I began last summer at a summer internship at Stanford University under the guidance of my mentor, Dr. Netta Zuckerman. And together, we worked together on the cell type biomarker discovery tool. And after the completion of that project, I extended it to statistical gene expression deconvolution. So how long did it take you? So I began working last summer. I went to Stanford about once a week to meet with my mentor, and I also worked every day at home on the programming and the development of the tool. And then when school started, I did it. I tried to put, um, and then after school started, I tried to put in about a couple hours each day. So in total, probably over 500 hours on this project. Wow. So it's been ongoing for about a year. Yes. And something you had to be very passionate about. Mm -hmm. Is this what you would think about in the morning or after school? Well, definitely. Um, while doing my homework, I really wanted to start doing my science for a project. Um, so it was a lot about balancing schedules, mm -hmm. I suppose. Mm -hmm. So a career in science? Well, I'm definitely interested in the scientific field. Um, currently, I'm leaning towards bioinformatics research or something computational. Okay. So do, do they have anything like bioinformatics in high school at that level? Because it's kind of a new department at college. Right. So usually at high school, what happens is we learn bio. Um, we learn biology and then computer programming separately. Mm -hmm. But I think utilizing the power of computers to analyze currently published microarray data and other biological information is really powerful. So how do you feel today? I feel really fortunate to have an opportunity like BioGenius. Congratulations. Thank you. So now we're here with the second place winner of the BioGenius Challenge, Mr. Nikhil Baduma. So congratulations. Thank you. How do you feel? I feel great. Yeah. I feel feel very excited, and I feel like you know this has been a really great experience today. I met a lot of new people, made a lot of new friends, and I feel like this is something that a lot of people would die to have. And I'm really, I, I real, I feel very, 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 very fulfilled to be here today. So tell us about your project. My project basically regarded the whooping cough vaccine, and whooping cough is a disease that it's that's getting really, really bad over the past couple of years, recurring every three to five years. And basically, I took a, took a look at the vaccine and identified a component that is actually preventing the infant's immune system from developing a proper immune response. So basically, I tried to design a vaccine, determine how to change the vaccine so we can make something that's better on the current, that's currently better than the market. Okay, so this is mostly for infants, right? Yes, mostly for infants. And the vaccines administered when they're an infant. Yeah. And the problem is? Is basically that you have this delay. So you have, the infant is first given the vaccine at two months of age, but you don't see actual immunity appear until four months later. So within that entire four-month gap, the infant is essentially prone to, to actually getting whooping cough, although it's been immunized already. Okay, and so what do you propose? So I propose, my study actually identified a component in the current vaccine called the pertussis toxin, and this toxin has been shown through my research to actually delay the progression of the immune response. So this would actually open a lot of doors. First, the first recommendation, obviously, is to remove PTX from the picture, remove it from the current vaccine formulation. But also, because of the results that we've gotten, we have an entire picture of how this, this mechanism works on a molecular level. So this actually opens the door to designing new new replacements for the pertussis toxin that would actually accelerate that process. So now it's not down to four to maybe one month, but actually down from four to maybe a week or two weeks. I see. So it's this toxin that's in the, the most popular vaccine, vaccine right now. Exactly, yeah. And you identified that that's what's causing the delayed exactly. response. Exactly, yes. And perhaps the next vaccine should be without that or, or something else. Exactly. Okay, I got it. So there was also a career panel today yeah. where um, you guys got to ask questions from this 
you know, panel of experts, people who have, you know, their career's gone this way, it's gone that way, people from Amgen, different scientists. What did you take out of it? Well, I thought it was a very interesting panel, but myself, what I took most out of that panel was basically um, the comment that you can never be afraid of failing. You can never be afraid of making a mistake because you always learn from it. And I think that's something I've experienced, but, you know, taken for granted as I've been doing my research. And, you know, really internalizing that statement could really help me move along a career, could help everyone move along in their career because ultimately you only learn from your own mistakes. So a career in science and biology? Well, right now I can't make a decision on the spot, but obviously I'm looking towards a career in the sciences, specifically medicine, and really in the Bay Area with Stanford right around the corner, you see scientists every single day, doctors every single day, taking what you find in the laboratory and bringing it to patients, and you see patients really happy because of that. Their lives are completely changed, uh -huh. and I feel like a career in that area would really be fulfilling in the long term. So you're excited by applied science, exactly. not just basic research. Both. But the translation of what we call basic research into what we call clinical research, so the transference, that, that link between what we call basic science and applied science. So what grade are you? I'm a junior. A junior in high school? Yeah. Wow, where do you get your confidence? Uh, I don't know. I just, I guess it's just an inherent aspect of my personality. I really like to talk to people. I really like to ask questions. And I think it's something that my parents have instilled in me as I've grown up, you know, to always be curious, to always ask questions, to never be afraid of, you know, being looked upon as someone who's a nerd or a geek. Because, you know, what I love is what I love. It's my passion. And so I can't, can't be too afraid to stand up for what I believe in, right? Well, congratulations again. Thank you. Nice to meet you.